The others there for the Battle of the Bulge. The Battle of the Bulge is the biggest battle Americans ever fought anywhere. Bigger than anything in the Civil War, bigger than D-Day. Bigger than Antietam? Yeah, much bigger, by a factor of 10 or so. And uh, it was a frightening, and I thought that the Germans were breaking through to get to Paris. So did the Americans at first. They smothered Eisenhower and guards so that no one could kidnap him. I thought I'd rush back to Paris and my pregnant wife and take them south to get out of France. But then I realized General Gavin was uh, one of the division commanders who was staunching the flow of Germans. I found him out at the front and he told me the facts. He said, we're going to beat the hell out of them. Just, just, they're not going anywhere. They're trying to get to Antwerp, not to Paris. He told me all about it, and so I was secure. I stayed there at the front with the 82nd Airborne. How did you broadcast from the front? Well, every army had a van, and you had to know where that van was and go to it after, at the end of the day, or at noon. You could do a noon broadcast, and you could do a midnight broadcast. This was some of Colonel Barney Oldfield's work, getting those vans together for them. I think the Signal Corps did that. Yes, well, he, he, he was organized. the recipient of the favor. Yeah. Barney Oldfield was the head of the press camp in Maastricht, and he was really very good at what he did. <laughs> but uh, no, that was done by the Signal Corps. Um, was the signal good out of the van? No. It was bad most of the time, so it was very frustrating. You didn't get through about 52% of the time. No matter so, how good your story no was. No matter how good your story was. Occasionally the BBC would get it and run it on their uh, network, but you missed America an awful lot of the time. It was very frustrating. How did you get along with the military? Fine. They loved us when they were advancing. When they were retreating in the bulge, they didn't want to see us. Gavin was the only person I could get in touch with. But most of the time, we were advancing, and advancing officers are much nicer than retreating <laughs> officers. How much could you report? What kind of censorship did they impose? It was really ridiculously thin. It was not very important. We carried a censor with us. We had our own private censor, so we got what we wanted out. How, how did you live? How did, where did you sleep and how did you travel? Well, in Maastricht, uh, Oldfield appropriated a, a hotel, rather comfortable. You slept very nicely in very good quarters, good meals, and uh, a band played at night. We didn't, <laughs> I didn't like that, but he, Oldfield thought that was great. A pretty girl came and sang. And, but you'd spend the day out at the front and then come back to that. It was. How did you travel? The jeeps. You drove or you were driven? Yeah, a motor pool and you could order a jeep and go. Yeah. And you could stay several days as I did. Out in the ruins of a town which we were going to use for a jump off. Whom did you work with among fellow journalists at that point? Whom did you see and work ABC with? had a man, ABC, yes it was ABC, a man named Bob Marcel who was really an engineer. But they, they were hard up for reporters so they re recruited him for reporting. And he and I had to travel together because uh, they only had one censor for us and we had to share him. So we did the same thing. So mostly color pieces. They weren't really very rich with substance.